Welcome back to Cambridge, everybody. This is Dave Vellante from theCUBE's coverage of CDO IQ 2024. I'd like to welcome in Paul Gillen. Hey, Dave. Uh, Co-host, Paul, you've done a number of these uh, CDO IQ, MIT at the time, CDO IQ conferences over at the Tang Center. I think you did one sort of solo one year when yeah, I was in town. You and I have done a I bunch. It was 2009, about their fourth year. A little, little tiny event at that point. It's exploded since then. I was checking out our library of this stuff. We have done well over 100 interviews at CDO IQ conferences, over 150 guests. We have over 1,000 shorts that we've built Amazing. from this conference. And uh, it's just crazy to see the ascendancy of the back office chief data, data quality people, and now it's front and center. The premier chief data officer event. Scott Taylor is here. If you don't know him, he's the data whisperer, author, great guy. Saved the day last night. Thank you so much for coming on theCUBE. Anything I could do, David. I'm thrilled <laughs> to be here. Paul, good to see you. I feel like I'm on the Carson Show of dating. No, oh, that's awesome for you to say. Really happy to da be here. Data finally. puppets, author, you data avengers, you're a keynoter, you're a content creator. Tell the audience a little bit about yourself. So Scott Taylor, data whisperer, but spoiler alert, I don't do a whole lot of whispering. I'm out there to just sort of yell, tell, and sell about the power and value of data management. So I work in, work I do is really around the storytelling aspect of enterprise data management. How do you get the business side engaged? How do you get stakeholder involvement? How do you get the money for a lot of this data work? And I focus on the, the classically unsexy stuff like data management, data quality, data governance, all the founda master data, reference data, metadata, MDM, RDM, PIM, RIM, DAM, all those foundational activities that have to be in place if you want to take advantage of anything else going on in the space. Now, how did you learn all this stuff? You were never a practitioner, but you were a consultant for many, many practitioners for many years, correct? Yeah, absolutely, so yeah. So you've absorbed you've, through osmosis all that knowledge. You, that you've right? outed me in terms of my <laughs> actual experience, but I was in you know 30 years in corporate data representing some really iconic world-class data brands like Nielsen, Dun & Bradstreet, Kantar. So on the sales and marketing and strategy side in that area, and dealt with every kind of enterprise at every level of maturity in every category, literally all over the earth. So that limits my scope in terms of what I yeah. engaged with, but began to see, and I was always the storyteller in the group. So like to say, I've been in storytelling since it was two words, way back. And you know, now data storytelling is a huge hot thing, but the ability to convey in some kind of business accessible narrative, the value that data management brings is where I fit in and I dealt with a lot of these enterprise data leaders who were kind of had a dual personality feeling of one, they were really passionate about the work that they could do and what it could bring to the enterprise. And they were extremely frustrated because nobody would listen to them. They talk about how it's done. They talk about techniques, they get under the hood. And one of the things I focus on is you got to talk about the why before you start getting into the how. And I never met a CEO or a CFO who's got money who cares about how you're going to get it done in data until they understand why it's important. Free Simon Sinek. You know, yeah. somebody was in the cube yesterday, Paul, and they mentioned data literacy. I'm like, what do you actually mean by that? And they said there's a there's a there's actually a Wikipedia entry uh, yeah, that yeah, defines yeah. data literacy. And essentially the definition is being able to tell stories with data. That's what you do. Yeah, yeah. And I, and I, that that's kind of the, there's two kinds of data storytelling out there in my perspective. There's the classic data storytelling that, a lot of books out there and really about analytics, how to take some insight or metric and put it into a context that drives some form of business action, super important. But again, I felt in the space, we need a story about why managing data is important. So this data storytelling for data management is kind of the second type of data storytelling. And I encourage enterprises, you know, you need both. It's not Sophie's choice here. You got to do both of them, but most people focus on the analytics storytelling stories with data in, and need to really beef up on the stories about the data. Well, what's an example of a story? I mean, help our view. IT people are not traditionally the best storytellers. Ex yes. <laughs> what's, an, what's an example of, of how they can of how they can tell a story? It's, you know, I the the work I do and the framework I put together, I call the three V's of data storytelling for data management. So kind of a knowing wink on the three V's of big data, but mine are vocabulary, voice, and vision. And so I encourage them, you know, get the words right. Forget the tech speak and the buzzwords. Again, that just people on the business side just glaze over when you start talking about, you know, the latest analytics graph hub fabric mesh you're going to, you're going to uh, implement. 
get your voice right, how do you sound about data? Does your whole team have the same kind of focus on what the opportunities are and what the benefits are? Have you put together almost an internal marketing program in your organization around data? And then the third V, that vision, everything you do in data has got to enable the strategic intentions of your enterprise. Where's your company going and why is data going to help you get there? And focus really on, you know, if you need to start somewhere, start with that last thing. What's the, why does your company exist? Forget about data. Go look for the business reason. Why does your company exist? And put that narrative together that shows that actually every company I've ever dealt with is some for, has some objective that's some form of trying to deliver value to their relationships through their brands at scale. That's a well honed phrase that I've worked with a lot. And it's extensible to every kind of enterprise. And so look at that. Find your version of that. You know, what is your company trying to do? What do your leaders say? And start showing how data is going to support those activities. I'm fascinated by data-driven organization. You know, we hear a lot about the, that term a lot. How do you become a data-driven organization? Have you seen organizations successfully transition to becoming data-driven, and how do they do it? You know, there's a lot of companies want to be data-driven. They just have a hard time finding a place to park. <laughs> But, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's whatever terminology for me that makes it work. So I don't get too deep in sort of the how you implement these things culturally. I say I focus on the why rather than the how. And, you know, embracing data technically is important. But, you know, to be data driven, to be data literate, to be data informed, to be data inspired, whatever that second word is, the business has to be engaged. And again, starting there, are you telling them the right story or explaining why it's important or explaining why standards are important, why not coming up with your own way to spell street every time you key in a new customer. And these things are really tactical and almost, you know, in the minutia, but that clogs up a lot of the, the data work that people do downstream, having inconsistent hierarchies, lacking categorization. There's no unique identifiers. Again, I come from the master data space where all those foundational elements are. And you don't have that stuff. It just, it does fall apart. So master data management, um, actually many data initiatives have failed to live up to the promise, right? The 360 view to the customer, the data warehouse itself. So we created data marts that created more stovepipes, master data management, big data and Hadoop. All of these, we're going to solve everything. Now, yeah. now it's AI. Um, so I'm interested in your perspective on why the industry has failed. Not that it's failed to deliver value, it's delivered a lot of value, but it's definitely failed to live up to the, to the hype, to the expectations, to the, to the promises to customers. Why do you think that is? And, and do you think this time around, it'll actually deliver? I, you know, I don't know if this time around is it. I mean, you know, Gen AI, they're already talking about AI governance. Right. Oh, we need to make sure those LLMs are fed the right training yep. corpus. As you say, you go back to big data. There was, you know, volume velocity. It's the variety that kind of kills you. All these data scientists, you know, when that came out, people were talking about spending 80% of their time munging and wrangling yep. and 20% of their time complaining about munging and wrangling. <laughs> and, you, you know, you go back to enterprise systems where people were starting to transition to those. And all of a sudden it was, we got to harmonize our legacy data. That's where I think silos came up. Mm -hmm. And you go all the way back, general ledger, you still need a chart of accounts. So I kind of look at this through line from Gen AI all the way back to general ledger that this same story around making sure the foundation's right is there. And, you know, to answer your question, why isn't it working? I think part of it is they're not capturing the imagination of the business side and having them realize this work's got to get done first. It's got to be, you know, why do you think you call it a foundation? And, and it's... It struggles because it's not sexy, it's boring, it's clerical, it's back office, it's, you know, why do I care about, you know, customer IDs and all that kind of really dull stuff. But again, if you don't have that, doesn't it doesn't get there. Yeah, so it's under-resourced because if it doesn't resonate to the business, the business is, ah, just you deal with it. There were early, you know, promises of, again, you know, 360, we're going to get three and them people end up going around in circles to, you know, kind of play on that, that geometry there. But, uh, and, you know, a lot of big promises, a lot of ocean boiling, a lot of looking yep. for that one size fits all, quick fix, band-aid, easy button, magic wand sign here. Everybody wants, yeah. yeah. But it's, it's hard. Yeah. Also, guess what? It's hard. It's really tough to set a standard in your organization. It's tough to align to 
a common definition of anything. It's tough to find that some version of that truth that people are trying to program around. And uh, you can boil my entire data philosophy down to three words, truth before meaning. And that's how I try and, again, give the headlines to the business side. Determine the truth in your data before you start deriving meaning out of it. And, you know, a lot of emotional stuff around the word truth. I'm not talking politically. I'm not talking, you know, personally. But at an organization, at an enterprise, you can find the truth. You can handle the truth if you've got data management. <laughs> True, because that's the first thing that happens in meetings is they attack the data. Yeah. If it doesn't fit their agenda. Yeah. And, you know, and software companies too, right? You know, yeah. everything demos perfectly. Yeah. But when you implement it on your own, if it doesn't work, it's not the hardware. It's not the software. It's the data. And it's usually that master data, reference data, metadata that's not in place. Is, is Gen AI an, an opportunity? Because everyone is on the business side now is, is riveted on Gen AI and, and uh fascinated by it uh, opportunity to, to put their data house in order or is this just another bauble is this another hadoop i you know it's i i hope it's another opportunity to drive a lot of those initiatives that are focused on that foundational stuff so yes and i think because it's so exposed and because every you know all our kids know about gen ai right my you know my relatives who knew nothing about data know about being able to create you know something out of chat gpt but that that story again is so similar you put crap in there you get crap out you know hallucinations are the latest version I, but I, I i hope that you know we always hope finally this is it but it's at least helping that story from the data management side of going you know we've been talking about this forever if we get it right we can leverage and i would argue it's a prerequisite to the opportunity yeah it's a mandate to get the data house in order and then then the opportunity will present itself and my prediction would be some companies will get it right Others won't. Maybe most won't. I don't know. Tell us about your book or books. Um, I, I'm fascinated by the 99% buzzword free. You, right. must, you must not talked about AI. <laughs> you know, so. <laughs> and so my book, uh, Telling Your Data Story, Data Storytelling for Data Management. As you mentioned, Dave, right on the cover, it says 99% buzzword free. I did not want to overpromise. And uh, recently translated into French where it's 99% Sam Ma a la mode, which of course <laughs> means no words but ice cream. So that's, that was a nice uh, angle there. But it's how to put a business accessible narrative together to sell in. And I'm overt about it, come from the sales and marketing background. It's like you've got to sell this in. The story I tell people that they need to tell about data management is a pitch. And you just get right to, you know, how do you, you got five minutes with your CEO, explain to them why managing data is important. I go through a lot of my, I have a whole section on why you should believe me. So I talk about my street cred. I do something that people have responded to nicely because there's a couple pages about what I don't do. Like, here's what this book isn't going to give you. So don't read any further. And I don't get under the hood. I don't talk about how. I don't talk about tools. I don't talk about implementation. I don't talk about culture, but I talk about that aspect that's so important, especially for data leaders or any aspiring data leader, how do you communicate better? How do you engage better with the organization? How do you get, when you're up for funding against better storytellers, the head of marketing is better storyteller than the head of data, right? The head of sales, if they don't tell a story, they're not making quota. So they, they're trained in those soft skills. And somehow, at least giving the portfolio of skills that a data leader has, you've got to beef up those soft skill part. You've got to be able to communicate. So pretty straightforward book. It was really fun to write and kind of put together. I've got, like I said, I've got these frameworks, the three Bs, the four Cs, the eight eights. I won't go through them all, <laughs> but just sort of pithy, mild stuff that at least give people some direction on how to put that narrative together. And you're making all this sort of what's generally perceived as mundane, back office stuff relevant to a much broader audience. Give a plug for what you do. Uh, how do people engage with you? I'm on LinkedIn all over the place. I'm on YouTube. I do content with brands now. So after getting out of the sort of the corporate world, I'm having a ball. I do events. In case you can't tell, I have a fear of not public speaking. So that's the way I present <laughs> myself. And uh, I love doing, getting on stage and just getting people fired up about something that is generally relatively boring. And that's the engagement I get afterwards that people are just like, you know, you said it the way I wish I could say it. Um, and work with software companies, data companies, uh, asso industry associations, anybody creating an event or looking for content to produce around this part of the space. 
And uh, I used to write white papers, but now I do puppet shows. You should check out the Data Puppets, which I have a series on that. Starring Very entertaining. CDO, yeah. the chief dog officer, and he uh, he hires a cat sultan from Meow Kinsey. Sanjeev was the voice of Micro Spoon in that. <laughs> Micro Spoon and Salesforce. So, uh, Beautiful. Really fun stuff. And again, it's just how to get some attention in the space. Scott Taylor. The Data Whisperer, thanks so much for coming to theCUBE. It was great to have you. Oh, a blast to be uh, here. Thank you so appreciate much. Appreciate it. All right, keep it right there. More from CDOIQ 2024. Dave Vellante for Paul Gillen, Sanjeev Mohan as well. We'll be right back right after this short break. You're watching theCUBE.